Welcome everyone back to weekly weather updates and this evening we'll have a look at the latest from the live radar We'll then have a look at the GFS, the GEM, the ECMWF and the GFS ensembles to finish up having a look at the UK Met Office run as well We've got a lot of high pressure around over the next week or two which I know a lot of people will enjoy with things being pretty dry For Scotland though there is the chance of showers at times and we are going to be seeing some chilly northerly airflows so we could be seeing um, some frost in places and some chilly days and nights. This high pressure though is sort of filling up the North Atlantic and we're going to be seeing blocking patterns um, in the longer term and one thing we've got to keep an eye out around day 10 and beyond is what's going to happen to these blocking patterns as we'll see with the GFS in a minute we could be pulling down cold northerly winds or we could get just stuck with low pressure over us so we'll have to see what happens in the longer term. But anyway make sure you um, if you enjoy the videos, make sure you like and subscribe, and make sure you to follow me on Twitter as well, the link's in the description. So if you do have a look at the live radar at the moment, you can see it is a pretty dry picture. We do have very little precipitation signal, and you can see the big high pressure is built over the centre of the United Kingdom. However, as I said, towards Scotland, there's always the potential we see some more moist Atlantic air come in. We've seen a few lighter, drizzly showers pushing in. But generally, most areas across um, the British Isles is dry at the moment. So if you do go through the GFS, have a look at what is happening in the longer term, you can see generally high pressure is in control. However, over the next few days, you can see those isobars are veering to the north. Um, and if we go to the entry of the HPA temperatures, you can see some chillier air is making it down the eastern side of the country. Now, not quite as cold as we were seeing a few days ago, where it did look like we were going to see sort of the zero degree line moving through most areas, but it's still going to bring in some chillier air. Now, in the longer term, we do see the high pressure sort of break down, but it's still in and around. Um, and you can see you've got a brief ridge here with a bit of a northerly airflow once again. Um, so it's still generally dry with a few showers here or there, but um, it is still chilly. Now, the longer term, you can see the big high pressure we do have ridging up towards Greenland. We also have high pressure out towards Europe. We're seeing these lows sort of get trapped as the jet stream dives southwards towards the Azores. Now, as we head towards day 10, you can see we're seeing a very chilly northerly plunge um, with very cold air sweeping through most of the country, minus five line getting through, if not colder. If we do go to the United um, Kingdom sort of look, you can see the minus eight line gets through many areas in central um, Scotland and the minus six, minus seven line getting through as well. And that only lasts around 24 hours or so, but still could provide some chilly conditions and you can't rule out a few wintry showers over Scotland. However, beyond that, high pressure moves back in, topples, and again, we see some more ridging northwards, and we see, again, potentially for some cooler air to come in from the north. So it's pretty chilly GFS run, this. Um, and, yeah, we'll have to see, really, um, what happens with it. Um, and towards the longer term, high pressure just takes back control. So very interesting seeing what is happening with the latest um, GFS run. Um, again, it all depends on the position of the blocking, um, and as we saw in yesterday's video, um, that blocking did provide potentially some heavy snowfall over Scotland in, in the late, in this, or the 6Z GFS yesterday. So do check out that video if you haven't already, just showing you the scenarios we could be seeing, even into late October, um, if we do get that blocking in the right place, we could even be seeing some cooler or colder conditions. If we do have a look at the GM and see how that does compare. Now, GM is obviously not going to be as cold as the GFS. The GFS, of course, is in the colder end of the spectrum. You can see chilly northerly winds coming early next week, but the high pressure is generally in and around the country. Beyond that, we see what I said at the start of the video, where we see low pressure getting trapped over the country. High pressure out towards Europe is not letting it move through as quickly, and that ridge over Greenland is dissipating. And you see generally, we're just stuck under low pressure with the centre of low up to our north, with a lot of westerly winds, not warm westerly winds by any means, quite, quite chilly polar maritime air mass will move through at times, and it will be quite unstable, a lot of showers, chilly, windy conditions. So not massively, um, not massively uh, different to the GFS in terms of sort of low pressure being involved, but it's where that blocking is. On this latest run, the blocking dissipates quicker, and we don't see it pushing as far northwards, um, bringing down those northerly winds. So again, all down to what's happening with this high pressure towards day 10. Um, and at this stage, it still is up in the air. 
If we have a look at the ECMWF, um, see how that does compare to the other two main models, you can see again a chilly northerly wind moving through the next few days, and then another sort of blast of cooler air in from the north um, by next weekend. And then beyond that, we see something very similar to the GM with low pressure trapped over the top of the UK, but a bit further west. So we actually are pulling up milder southwesterly winds, especially in the far southwest. Further northwards, of course, could be a bit chillier, and you can see there still is that ridging up towards Greenland. But it is just all shifted a bit further westward. So we're not pulling down those cold northerly winds, which are heading towards Iceland. You can see Iceland's getting a real Arctic blast. And if we all shifted this a few hundred miles further east, all of these low pressure systems, sort of 500 miles east, we would be um, starting to get a bit of a northerly airflow. So we'll have to keep an eye really uh, on what happens with this um, sort of pattern. Um, but at this stage, still is up in the air it does look like the high pressure is going to be breaking down um, just how it does break down will depend uh, will, 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 will sort of change what sort of air mass we could be seeing towards day 10 and as i said in previous videos this time of year sort of um, middle to end of october we still have the potential of seeing very warm air flows from the south but at the same time very cold air flows in from the north so um, these sort of pressure changes do give quite drastic changes um, on the surface um, and the upper airs as well so if we do have a look at the GFS uh, ensembles, you can see only the 6Z is fully out at this stage. Um, so we'll have to look at that, um, and we'll maybe have a peek at the 12Z in a minute as well. You can see over the next sort of week, it is generally up and down. Cooler temperatures coming in um, uh, sort of to, in the next couple of days as we have a chilly and northerly wind. Then temperatures pick up once again and potentially drop a little bit once again as we can have some chilly and northerly airflow. Then it generally stays around or just above average. And then we do see a bit of a drop off to around or just below average right in the longer term with more precipitation. So this is when that blocking is going to be breaking down. We can see more low pressure come in. You can see the 6 edge GFS went quite chilly as well, getting down to minus 5 at 850 HPA. And you can see maybe 5, 6, 7 or some members getting down to that level. So 20, 25% of them are going quite cold, chilly with sort of a north or northwesterly airflow. Others remaining just cold or chilly. Others going warmer. So we'll have to keep an eye, of course, on it. It's expected to have this much uncertainty in the longer term. Um, and at this stage, we'll have to keep an eye on what happens. If we do have a look at the 12Z, uh, which is only updated out to 10 days, you can see it again in a bit more of a um, detailed look at the next sort of 10 days, quite up and down. Um, and you can still see there are some very cold ensemble outliers around 7, 8, 9, 10 days' time. And we'll have to keep an eye, really, um, on what happens with this, these ensembles. The majority, again, are around average, so it's nothing special at this stage what that GFS operational showed, but it is a scenario that is possible. And I just want to keep reiterating that um, because we could see a flip in these ensembles. We could see a flip to something colder, or we could see a flip to something warmer, um, or we can even see something flip something very stormy um, because, as I said, with very warm air masses still to our south, very cold air masses starting to gather to our north, we can see drastic shifts in very small pressure pattern changes. If we have a look at the mean sea level pressure, uh, you can see generally high pressure at the moment and then slowly dropping off to around 19th, 20th of October when it is starting to be lower pressure, below 1,010 millibars. Still a lot of uncertainty, of course, with that something going very low, some remaining um, under high pressure. Um, and again, it all is subject um, to change. Um, it's what happens with the breakdown of the block. If we do have a look at Glasgow to give us an idea of what we could be seeing further northwards, if we have a look at the sea level pressure, you can see again, very similar to uh, London in terms of high pressure at the moment, then slowly dropping off to lower pressure. It is getting a bit lower than London, about 10 millibars lower on the average, getting down to 1,000 millibars. Um, but that is expected, of course. Scot uh, Scotland is much further northwards, close to the, the typical sort of Icelandic low, which we would expect um, for autumn and winter um, generally. So it is expected to be a bit lower pressure. But it, again, still quite a lot of uh, uncertainty similar to the uh, uh, similar to London and again all depends on what happens with the breakdown of the high pressure over the UK and the block that seems um, to be also popping up above uh, sort of over Greenland over the next week as well if we have a look at the age of THPA temperature and precipitation for Glasgow you can see generally 
Things are above average um, in terms of upper air temperatures. We're going to see colder temperatures at the moment as we have a bit of northerly airflow moving through. Then it picks up, maybe a bit more of some cooler air moving in around 15th, 16th October, so by the end of this working week. And then things are around or just above average before we get similar to London around 10 days' time. We see a big drop off in the ensemble members to around or below average as we do have quite a few colder runs coming out. They are at this stage outliers. Um, and there is a lot of uncertainty with it. As you can see, there's an equal number going to around 5 degrees at 50 HPA. So, again, have to keep an eye on it. One thing is a lot more precipitation in for Glasgow um, beyond the next maybe three or four days. Um, and, again, it is pretty usual for a lot of precipitation to be around um, as we do have low pressure trying to push in. And even when we do have high pressure at the moment, we do see, even with those winds just veering around the high pressure, we could see some moist air masses um, or moist air flows moving in. And as you can see at the moment, we do have drizzly sort of lighter showers around. And that is probably going to be a theme over the next few days as well. But in the longer term, still does look like low pressure will be returning for all. All depends on how the high pressure does break down in uh, deciding what sort of air mass we see and how quickly we do see these unsettled conditions coming back in. If we finally have a look at the UK Met Office run, it has updated today, so we can have a look at the 3 o'clock run. Um, you can see... Over the course of this evening, we do see that sort of drizzly shower coming in from the northwest, and that's going to continue through tomorrow and Tuesday. It doesn't look Scotland, even though generally most areas are going to be dry across the British Isles. It's going to be a little bit unsettled there with some chillier conditions and some cloud and rain. Beyond that, generally still a few showers around in Scotland, potentially across northern England, but generally most areas in Ireland, Northern Ireland, Wales and England are pretty dry um, and um, pretty decent where we do have um, getting well we where we do get some sunshine now this afternoon we saw temperatures peaking around 15 16 70 degrees fairly pleasant in the sunshine but what we do have cloud and some more drizzly conditions across Scotland you can see a little bit chillier only around 10 degrees and even colder across some of the mountains for Monday, you can see temperatures in the afternoon struggling around 14, 15 degrees across England. For northwards, really low teens, if not high single digits. Monday evening is going to be pretty chilly widely, again down to sort of mid single figures for many areas across England. Further eastwards, though, where we have a bit more of a breeze coming in off the uh, North Sea, it's going to hold those temperatures up a little bit, so maybe 11, 12 degrees or so. Beyond that, for Tuesday afternoon, again, not a particularly pleasant day. 14, 50 degrees, but when we do see sunshine, it can perk up the temperatures a little bit. Um, but if we do see cloudy, it will feel pretty chilly. Um, and then as we head through to Wednesday afternoon, you can see, once again, temperatures are starting to pick up a little bit. 16, 17 degrees possible in the south, but still chilly in the north and west. And then by Thursday, still got those potentially warmer temperatures in the south, 16, 17 degrees, which is really quite decent for this time of year, I must say. And then beyond that to Friday morning, things are chilly overnight. So you can see both those temperatures. At times, it does look like we could be seeing some decent temperatures, especially across the south, um, where we do see sunshine, some dry conditions, um, and the breaking in any cloud that does build. Um, but overnight, still, um, quite widely, we'll see some chilly conditions getting out into mid to high single digits. But for the northwards, it's going to be a little bit cooler, um, uh, maybe only low teens or even single digits across some areas in Scotland and with cloud and rain around and sort of drizzly showers it may feel pretty miserable so do keep an eye out on your local forecast of course and keep an eye on the light radar as well as that is a very good indication on is it if it's likely uh, for you to be seeing any rain so yeah very interesting coming up in the next few weeks as we head towards Halloween and then we finally head into November and soon We'll be sort of thinking about December time and what could be coming up for the winter and the Christmas period as well. So make sure you do stay tuned. So anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new and I'll see you again for another video soon.